John Dedekis. I'm a novelist, a manuscript editor, a writing coach, and a former editor on CNN's The Situation Room with Wolf Blitzer. You're one-to-one -one with me, and I'm one-to-one -one with Mike Luckovich. There he is, and I think his, his screen is probably frozen, and uh, this, is, this is live, and we'll hope <laughs> I hope we'll be able to get this worked out. He was plugging in his phone and uh, to make sure that it was uh, all charged up. But while we're waiting for uh, uh, for Mike to get uh, uh, get plugged in and everything, let me just tell you briefly uh, briefly about him. He's a, a Pul Pulitzer Prize winning political cartoonist for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. His cartoons are syndicated in 150 newspapers. And his most recent book is The Twisted History of the GOP. And we're going to talk to him about that. We're going to look at some of his uh, political cartoons and, uh, and, and take it from there. So I think Mike is about ready. Uh, let me just see if he's there yet. I don't think he is. Um, and we were, we were talking. Oh, there he is. He's, and I'm going to add him to the screen here. There you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are we having fun yet? I I'm, I was in a little bit of a panic there. This is just typical. John, you're dealing with a cartoonist, so just remember that. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, thank. Listen, thank you very much for doing this. And um, you're talking sure. to us thank from you. your from your basement office in in Atlanta, I presume. Yes. And tell us yes. about the flag. Tell us about the flag behind you. Okay, so so uh, you know I was working at the Atlanta Journal Constitution uh, years ago, uh, of course before the pandemic when I had to come into the office every day, and uh, so I I got this package in the mail. I didn't know who it was from. I wasn't expecting anything, and uh, so I I opened it up and it was this big flag, and I, it, in it was a note from John Lewis. He sent it to me just out of the blue. And uh, it was a it was a flag that, you know, had been raised over the U.S. Capitol and and uh, and then he sent it to me. So I just thought that was so that was so nice. I, I, I knew uh, John Lewis uh, for many years and I, I he kind of liked me as uh, the fact that I was a cartoonist. I, I did a number of drawings for him. I, I did one that he had uh, in his office. I drew him as Moses and he's saying, let let my people vote. Yeah. So I've done a lot of different different things like that. I I once uh, I once uh, uh, was at a dinner years ago, and for for whatever reason they seated me seated me next to John Lewis, hmm. and we started talking, and he was telling me about how as a kid he would go b back into his backyard chicken coop and kind of preach to the chickens just to kind of you know learn learn the cadence and things and uh so after he told me about that i i did a little drawing of him i i drew him as a little kid i don't remember what the what the caption was or anything but i drew him as a little kid uh preaching to the chickens but he had an adult his adult head on this little kid's body but anyways <laughs> he liked it and he so every, every time i would see him in a, at an event as I would come up to him, he would recognize me and he'd get a big smile on his face. So I always thought that was really cool. That's nice. That's wonderful. And I think you did something when he died. Uh, wasn't it a rainbow or something or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. He's he's on a rainbow, you know, headed headed up, headed up into heaven. Yeah. Uh, Oh well, listen. I want to take. I want to talk about your books, and uh, this is the uh, the cover, I guess, of the uh, of the one that of the uh, the book that's that's just out uh, uh, right this month. The twisted history of the GOP, and uh, the the it's a classroom where the teacher is basically covering the slavery chapter of yeah. American history, and uh, uh, tell us about how that uh, that that particular. Uh, a panel came about. Okay. Well, so, so she's, she's reading GOP approved history from a GOP approved history book. And she's saying after getting free passage to America, they immediately, they immediately received jobs. And this is the slavery chapter, of course. And I, so I was just, you know, I don't know how I uh, come up with ideas exactly. It's, 
it's like me, it's like mentally pushing toothpaste at a tube. It's like I'm I just struggle, you know. I just push, I I push and push with my brain to come up with something, and the 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 main motivating factor is I start to panic because it's getting late in the day, and I have a very early deadline. It's just over the years, it's just gotten earlier and earlier. So now I have to have my cartoon drawn and in by 4 p.m. So, so I'm, I'm always, I've always been a procrastinator. <laughs> so, so now I, I, you know, I, I get in front of my computer and I'm, you know, I'm reading the Atlanta Journal Constitution. I'm looking at various uh, 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 news sites and, and I'm looking at Twitter because there's uh, news is constantly there's so much news on Twitter and it's, and it's always immediate. So I'm just sitting there and I'm just, you know, I'm just a little bit nervous. And then as it gets close to, you know, if I don't have an idea now by like noon or one o'clock, I really start to, I really start to panic, but the panic often helps me. Uh, well, so, how, well, so uh, how's today's, how's today's cartoon coming? You know, I actually have, I, I actually came up with an idea. I actually woke up last night and was thinking about it. And so there's an idea. I haven't even drawn it out yet, uh, but um, uh, it's it's going to be something on uh, on uh, Russian, Russian, Russia, and Putin and their uh, debacle in Ukraine. And so, uh, yeah. So that's that, that's what I'm thinking about right now. But you know what? I'm I, I might draw it out, and it it, it may be it may be really crummy so i just have to wait and see but well, what, what do, i do, do, John, do your do your do your do your editors ever reject them oh yeah and and you know it's uh it's a good thing because uh you would think well you shouldn't interfere in a in an artist's freedom but it's not really that it's more of a, uh i i liken it to the to looking at the word who who for an hour so if i come up with a sketch and i'm looking at it I keep looking at it and I look, I keep looking at it and it, it sort of loses its meaning to me. It's like looking at the word who, if you think, well, what the hell does who even mean? So, so w w when I'm, when I have these ideas, I'll come up with two or three. I, because I'm working now in my basement, I will show them to my wife and she, she has a good uh, uh, read on, on what works and what doesn't. And then I'll I, I will send it to my to my editor, and on, on the you know they occasionally rarely uh, do do they get turned down, but when they do they they have a good reason, and I always think oh man I'm I'm glad I'm glad they they, they did that. Well, so if they do turn it down, um, does that mean then that uh, they have, what do they do? Do they have to go into the file and come up with an old one, or you? No, it means my my panic level goes into hyperdrive, and I have to come up with something very quickly, and and again that usually works. I mean, I've had in the past six months, there was only one time where I just ran out of time, and and they had to run a wire cartoon. So it it nor it normally works, but uh, uh, you know it's it's always a it, it still is, and it always has been a challenge to come up with something, and I'm always. You know, I always love getting up and 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 starting the day and thinking, okay, what am I going to do? I'm running out of time here. It's it's kind of fun. Does it? It I get the impression that you're sort of an adrenaline junkie. You sort of you sort of are are empowered <laughs> by the fear or the panic or yeah. the terror. Yeah, it's. I think I was like this in, as a kid in school. You know, I would, you know, fart around until the last minute before I started an assignment. <laughs> And that's sort of how I am now. I just, you know, it's the same thing. It's, uh, and, and, and I also, it's sort of like, it's sort of like a runner's high. There are certain times, like I can be s sitting here and, and really having a hard time with, with coming up with an idea, but then I'll sort of hit, hit a period where everything sort of starts to work. Uh -huh. And, and it's sort of like, a, instead of a runner's high, it's sort of like a, I, I don't uh, like a silliness high where I can take a, where I can take complex issues and sort of combine things together, like in a puzzle and make it work so that, and hopefully the, the, the end result 
is something that is, uh, I want it to be uh, clever or humorous, but also make a point. And if I can a, do that, I feel like I've had a good day. Is there, a, is there a technique that you use in order to tap into that creativity? Or do the drugs peak at just the right time? <laughs> yeah, the drugs seem to peak when I'm most panicking. You know, it's like that. All it just sort of I sort of force that, that 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 high on myself at that point, and yeah. But it's it 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 works, and it's uh, you know, and and this is, you know, I I was crummy in math. Uh, this is something that I you know I was always a cartoonist, uh, and 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 I have this ability to to uh, take complex things and kind of boil them down to their essence and with humor, hopefully. And, and having this, having that kind of weird ability, I'm just so glad I found a place to, to use it as a cartoonist. Well, let's take a look at another cartoon. This is uh, okay. Kevin McCarthy, who's the Republican uh, 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 leader in the, uh, in the house, I guess. And yeah. uh, uh, let me just get rid of this so that we can take a better look at it. Okay. Um, Explain that one. Okay. So this is uh, Kevin McCarthy is saying the January 6 hearings are partisan. So far, only Republicans have testified about Trump's corruption. <laughs> and so I, I like this cartoon because I think it shows, you know, they, they Kevin McCarthy and all those uh, uh, corrupt uh, jerks that are <laughs> House <laughs> leadership, like uh, Jim Jordan, mm -hmm. he... Uh, they, they've all been saying that this, that the, the, that these January 6 hearings were going to be partisan and not, uh, not legitimate, but, but the January 6 committee has been really smart in, you know, use, using, uh, uh, Liz Cheney and, uh, King, 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 uh -huh. Yeah. And also, uh, a lot of, uh, mostly Republican witnesses, Republicans who were there, uh, during Trump's, uh, uh, years and so it, it it has been partisan but in a in a very GOP way it, it really has made the uh, hearings I think effective yeah do you what kind of you must get blowback on a daily basis uh, yeah. for your cartoons especially when you strike a nerve talk about that I mean does it get nasty how do you oh, deal yeah. with it yeah you know it's uh, well the the, the uh, thing about uh, social media, is that you can get uh, hate for reaction very quickly. So I can post, you know, I post uh, my cartoons. They, they, they're posted on AJC.com every day, mm -hmm. but they're also on Facebook every day and on Twitter. So I will start getting uh, a feedback immediately. And I figure if I can dish it out, I, sh I should be able to take it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't... Uh, I rarely respond. I used to get on the phone with people, but it's it's like arguing re religion. You're, you're not going to change any minds and you're just going to piss people off. Uh, so, you know, when I do uh, in, a, in a rare event, uh, get a get a phone call from someone that that is pissed off about a cartoon. Instead of getting into an argument with them, I, with them, I just say, you know, you're you're probably right. And then that just is kind of a good, <laughs> a good way to end end the conversation because I just don't want to get into it. And and I get emails from people. I mean, I, I get an email almost every day from from certain people, and they're just like they're like dumb. And I just don't want to I don't want to engage them. You know, it's like I, I they're just they're uh i i just don't want to waste time on that and feed them uh, cuz because then i'm going to get more stuff from them so i just i just try and i i ap appreciate the negative comments but i don't really reach out and and try and talk to people about that you take that. some do you take some of that negative uh, feedback to heart no no <laughs> okay <laughs> are there, well let me so, ask it so, this way are go ahead well, are there are there any lines that you will not cross uh gosh well you know it's a uh the the atlanta journal constitution is a family newspaper so i can't draw naked people <laughs> and you know although i've tried they won't they won't let me do that uh but no i mean i i 
you know, I think that I can make most of my uh, statements in a hard hitting way and humorous way without crossing a line. I mean, I, I think that I have gotten, I, I think I can still be hard hitting without doing something that's going to just, because in the, in, in, in the past, uh, many years ago, uh, I have done cartoons that have really, uh, really upset people. I guess have crossed the line. And when that happens, the symbolism of the cartoon overshadows the actual message I was trying to get across. So mm -hmm. it's it's really it doesn't work to to try and cross the line. If you if you understand what I'm saying, I think so. And and I'm showing the cartoon now of the uh, conservative members of the Supreme Court, and you've yeah. got this open carry. Uh, yeah, and they're, and they're, basically, they're carrying the gun lobby's water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, it, it's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the book, because, I mean, you're 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 highlighting, you know, the GOP. So is this book going to be filled with, I don't know, anti-Republican cartoons? What's the philosophy uh, yeah. about the book? Well, you know, it's it's called the the twisted history of the GOP. And it sort of. uh charts in the charts of the decline of them being a rational party you know they, they they actually stand for nothing now other than you know tax cuts for the rich that was their major accomplishment under trump and so having the republican party as a nemesis has really been uh it, it makes my job uh somewhat less hard uh, knowing that they're always going to say or do something ridiculous. I mean, you just look at, you know, uh, Marjorie uh, Taylor Greene here in Georgia or mm -hmm. Lauren Bo Bobart or uh, so many of these, uh, Louis Gohmert. I don't know if he's even in Congress now, but, you know, there's so many of them that have just be, th th that are just, they, they shouldn't be in Congress in the first place. They're just, uh, uh, they're just terrible human beings. And, uh, you know, and I, I'm hoping that the, you know, that the, the America needs two working competitive parties and that the GOP is, you know, heading so far right that, you know, it's becoming autocr autocratic. And, and, and so that's what this car, uh, book kind of charts is sort of the, the demise of the, of the intelligent uh, working Republic, Republican Party. Well, and, and, and this, guy's a, this guy's a big propellant. To, well, to, exactly. To, I mean, when when he was president, I might you must have I mean, I predicted that he was going to be a scandal a day as president. And I probably was not very far off the mark. And this is a <laughs> this is him. Uh, sh this is the double standard. You know, my taxes are, you know, they're classified. But, you know, uh, methods and uh, spies and things like that are, you know, those secrets are unclassified. Um, I yes. mean, Trump was probably the gift that kept on giving, right? Well, in a way, I, and I, I, I've likened him repeatedly uh, to being married to a nymphomaniac. <laughs> it's like at first it's the greatest thing ever. And then all of a sudden you're just banging, oh, please stop. <laughs> this is, it's a nightmare. So, so that's what it's, that's, I think that's what it's like for, for, a uh, satirist uh, and, and cartoonist, and 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 probably even uh, you know comedians that that delve in, into politics, because you know part of part of being effective as a cartoonist is being able to take an issue or something that a politician has said, and then kind of kind of showing raising it to the level of of a to show its absurd absurdity. I don't know if I'm making any sense there. Exactly. With Trump, it's, it's hyperbole. It's hyperbole. Right. And and then so you kind of can kind of twist it and, and make it, uh, you know, show it how, how ridiculous it is. But with Trump, you, how do you, how do you, how do you raise that to show the ridiculous when it's already so ridiculous? Yeah. It's just but like, yes, I mean, but dude, there are 70 million people who follow this guy. I mean, that's no small potato. I, I have no, I have no idea what is going on with my fellow Americans. I mean, it's just, I'm so disappointed. You know, I'm not some, I'm not some brainiac, you know, I'm a cartoonist, 
But I realized when this guy was running for president that he was a threat to this to this country. Mm-hmm. What what is going on with people where they can, you know, a, 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 you know, applaud what this this fool is ha, has done? I mean, it's just it it amazes me and disappoints me greatly. Well, let's take a look at another one. Um, okay. You talked about uh, uh, oversimplifying or at least uh, showing the absurdity. You know, this shows, this goes back to the sort of the open carry thing and the and the, dr- the, the gun issue. And, you know, Republicans are, you know, up in arms about, you know, LGBTQ rights and, you know, what's going to happen to our kids in the schools. But uh, this contrasts with uh, uh, these uh, yahoos with assault weapons, and the Republicans don't seem to have a problem with that. And I think you posed it as a rhetorical question, and and the question was, well, what you know what the question is? It was, yeah. What uh, when would Republicans consider these guys a threat to kids? Right. And so they're you know they're fine, they're fine with all their guns, but you know they dress up like uh, flamboyant females, and and now now they're the 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 grave national threat. It's just it, everything is just so backwards with them right now. I I just don't get it. Well, and I and here's another one. Uh, I mean, I I love your cartoons, and and of course we're not going to be able to have time to do all of them. But uh, I mean, and and you know, I would say just to be honest, there are probably a couple of days where you miss the mark, or it's you know, it's it's not what? that funny, but that's okay. Uh, but this one, <laughs> this one, you nailed it. Uh, it came out right after the Supreme Court decision overturning, you know, Roe v. Wade. And I mean, this is the power of symbolism um, because you've got these, you know, uh, 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 faceless handmaids who are now right. approaching the voting booth. Yes. And it, yeah. Handmaid strike back is the is the caption. And and uh, and I think that, you know, it remains to be seen. But I think that that's that may be what happens in the midterms because the Republicans have taken away a woman's right to body autonomy. They have taken that right away and said, no, you, you, you know, you don't have the, you know, this is a right that women have just have had for 50 years and should have forever. And the fact that we are going backwards uh, like this is just it just is amazing and and I think that you know if there's an issue that is going to motivate people to get up uh, get up off the couch and go and vote I think that this is this is the issue and I've been I've been actually trying to come up with an idea uh, uh, maybe this week uh, uh, about how you know maybe a, a a man is how he is going to show his commitment and support for his partner and and i've got to come up with a uh, an interesting way of showing this but by going into a voting booth and and voting uh, voting out the voting out republicans because that would be the ultimate uh sign of commitment and support i think for a woman uh, yeah and i mean this one resonated with me again it's a it's a voting one and uh, yeah. you, you basically and it's a woman that's significant uh, yes, and she's got two choices. Yeah, uh, you uh, you can either vote for Republicans who took away your reproductive rights, or Democrats who want to return them. Yeah. So I like uh, this is one of my favorite cartoons so far this year, and I just yesterday I got an email and I've been getting uh, numerous emails uh, from women's groups who have asked if if they can uh, include this. Uh, cartoon on a uh, on a post on a postcard that they're sending out to to voters so i've had numerous uh numerous groups have asked me and of course i just i I immediately send them a i had attach a copy to them and 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 have them do their thing with it are you considering this entering this for the next uh, pulitzer i i might i mean i mean the the pulitzer isn't just one cartoon it's 15 okay so you know i kind of you kind of have to decide, okay, what, uh, what is still, uh, uh, but people, people are going to be looking, we'll look at a car, uh, a Pulitzer entry and we'll have to judge, uh, them months after these cartoons have run. So some cartoons that I think are strong right now in, 
you know, in a few months from now may not be. So I just, at the time, I just have to go through and check. I mean, you were, you were a Pulitzer finalist in 1986, which was really at the very beginning of your career. Yeah. Um, I mean, that must have been, uh, describe what that must have been like. I'm brutally disappointing that I didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's all about winning. Got that. <laughs> no, it was, no, it was, it was, it was quite a, a, a surprise. Because you know I was a, a a young cartoonist, and and wasn't expecting that, and so, uh, but it so it was a great, it just felt great. The thing is though, John, is that you know this job is, is such an amazing job to have, that winning a prize is, is sort of like frosting on the cake. It's just like. You know the, the the job itself is, is is the thing, and 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 of course I will never turn down a, a, an award, but but uh, it, it is the job that I love so much. In '86, what you say it was a surprise to I mean, did did you did someone else enter your cartoons on your behalf, your editor or something, or? Yeah. You know, John, I don't even remember to be honest with you. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> but but okay, fair enough. But uh, I mean, you know, there's but you've got there's a trend here. I mean, you got two Pulitzers, uh, you know, you finalist three times, a winner twice. Um, that how does does it does it work the opposite way when you've reached that kind of a pinnacle? Do you uh, look at yourself and going, oh my God, I can't repeat it. I'm, I I I'll never be able to live up to my uh, reputation. Does that go through your head at all? That fear of failure. No, no, you know, I, I, uh, I still feel like I can come up with, with good ideas. And, and I, and, you know, I, I, I just sent this book to send it. We have four kids and, and they all got a copy of the book and uh, Mickey, our son who lives in Seattle, he emailed me back and he said, man, he said, you know, your cartoons, he says, they're, they're, they, they just seem to be getting better. Yeah. I thought that was such a nice Thank for him to say it. It meant a lot uh, 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 for me for, to, for, for someone who has, you know, really followed my my cartoons to, to say that. So, so, uh, and 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 I still have a a love for this job. So I'm just I'm just happy to keep doing it. And I, I don't feel like I'm gonna, you know, if I start feeling like I'm I can't come up with ideas or something anymore, then then maybe I'll I'll start worrying about stuff like that. But I'm 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 feel good I feel good now. How have you? How do you feel you've changed over the years, as in terms of a cartoonist? How have you changed and grown? Well, I think uh, until the George W. Bush years, I always sort of thought that the uh, that America was sort of like a plane on autopilot. You could have different pilots, but it was always going to be successfully landed, and. Then with George W. Bush and lying us into uh, Iraq, uh, I started to see how how things don't always work out like they're supposed to. The democracy is fragile, and and then of course that that only uh, accelerated under Trump, where where norms, where guardrails for our government were just ignored, and and the uh and this started before uh, uh trump but uh with with gingrich and and fox news but the dehumaniz dehumanization of the opposition instead of working with them and disagreeing but still being you know part of part of a government together that kind of it was all power at all costs for republicans they they lost their reason for being and so it's at that point that that i really started to think you know, I can't just do, I can't just do humorous cartoons. I have a message that I've got to get out to people that this is what our government, this is what's happening with our government. And this is what Republicans have become. And so I, I feel a much more uh, a seriousness uh, about what I'm doing. I've always taken it seriously, but, but even more so now. Did you ever have any self-doubt about what you were going to do with your life? I mean, uh, 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 a yeah. lot of people struggle with that. How did you get your start and how easy or hard was it? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I, 
you know, I was in, uh, I had drawn in high school. Uh, I started editorial cartooning and because uh, I, I like cartoons and I, I noticed uh, Jeff McNelly's cartoons. He drew for the Chicago Tribune earlier for the Richmond News Leader. And, and I started thinking, man, this guy, he, he, what a great artist. And so I started liking his stuff and, and following politics. And in high school, I went to a Catholic high school for a while and started drawing the nuns in editorial cartoons. Oh, that must and have been, it, that must have gone over great. It, it did with the, it with, with the student body, you know, the nuns and the priests, they weren't, they weren't happy, but, <laughs> but it was really, a, a, it was really great to see that, you know, you had some power to, to, to get your points across. And, and then, uh, so what was what was the question, John? Now, I, I, well, how I, hard? I mean, I, you know, were there doubts about how, what oh, you were yeah, going to yeah. do, and how easy or hard was it? Yeah. Okay. So I got into college. I went to the University of Washington, and I was working for the University of Washington as the cartoonist. But at this, at the same time, I was telling my uh, then girlfriend, now wife, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do for a living. I think I'm going to go into social work, but I don't, I don't know what. And and then I it just sort of became apparent at the end, Hey, I need to get a job as a cartoonist. That's the only thing I, I have any, uh, desire to do or, or skill at. Uh, so of course I couldn't find a job as a, as a cartoonist, uh, when I got out of school. So I, I started selling life insurance for a couple of years, which was, uh, which, which, which was difficult. And, and, uh, but eventually, eventually I was freelancing my cartoons and I eventually got a job in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, so that was back in 1984. Okay, and the has your process changed over the years? The, the way you approach it? Yeah, not really. It's always been the uh, procrastination followed by panic. Okay, and that's 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 really how I work, and and it's it'll always be that way. I want to take a look at another uh, another cartoon because this actually you know, speaks to something you were talking about a minute ago about the, uh, you know, the, the, the lack of, of polit of civil political discourse. And right. I mean, on one hand, and I'll be devil's advocate for a second, yeah. arguably a lot of your cartoons could be seen as polarizing, you know, sort of yeah. uh, accentuating the polarization. So, yeah, you know, don't you, do, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm in a sense representing some of the conservatives who may be listening, um, you know, don't you see yourself as perpetuating the problem that you feel exists? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to reveal what, what they're doing. I, I mean, re Democrats aren't perfect, but they at least know what they stand for. You know, they stand for uh, freedom to vote freedom for women to have reproductive rights, uh, freedom for people to uh, have health care, uh, to, to, to earn a decent wage. They, they stand for things. Republicans, if you listen to a Republican talking like Marco Rubio, he talks about radical socialist Democrats. You know, it's just nonsense talk. What, what, you know, he couldn't describe what he's even talking about. It's all, it's all crap. So, so my, my, my so it's not like I, I'm okay. I've got to do something on this side today because I did something on this side yesterday. The the Republicans are 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 are, are bad news for this country right now, and so that I feel my mission is to expose that every day that they're doing it, and so I, I'm probably going too long with this answer, but. No, I don't feel like I have to. I don't feel like I'm part of the problem. I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to show what the problem is, and and let's let's move on from that. Let's let's try and improve ourselves. Do you have any kind of sense or advice or experience in being able to bridge that uh, that uh, political chasm that exists in the country now? The civil you know, the civil discourse that's not very civil anymore. I mean, how do we get back to a point where we can, you know, find common political ground or have we reached the point of no return? Well, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist and I keep hoping that, you know, even, you know, even, you know, most, 
Republicans realize that the Republican Party is in is in a bad is in bad shape. You know, uh, you know, there are recent polls that show that Americans now overwhelmingly, you know, I think for the first time realize that democracy is threatened. That that's one of the top issues. So my hope is that you know the that the Republican uh, slide to authoritarianism is being recognized, and that we will kick their butts in the midterms and and in 2024 and then and then maybe at that point uh, republicans will mainstream re- republicans will re- will grab their party back from this right wing crazy fringe and we can we can move forward together as a country how optimistic are you that that just might happen this november are you optimistic or pessimistic I'm uh, I'm guardedly optimistic. Has that evolved at all lately in the last couple of months? Yeah, uh, I I think that I I whatever whatever is below guardedly, I've moved up to guardedly optimistic because <laughs> you look, you know, the the big the the big right wing uh, uh, complaint was uh, gas prices and inflation. Yeah. You know, it's it's not a. I mean, and that is something that really a president has nothing, to, has no control over. And I know that there are historical trends where you know in the uh, midterms, the president who is uh, the president's party who is in power usually takes a hit. So I know that, but you know, you have this uh, 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 corrupt Republican Party who really have no solutions to any problems, just just nonsense like radical socialist Democrat talk mm-hmm. or they're woke or, or cancel culture, all that nonsense. Mm-hmm. And then you have, uh, you have this Democratic Party, you have a president in Joe Biden who, is, who, is, who has done more than, than any president in 50 years. He has, he has gotten more legislation through good legislation uh, that'll, that'll help us fight climate change, uh, and 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 uh, you know help people uh, during the pandemic, uh, and 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 so many so many th- things that that are positive, and 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 the economy's booming in a huge way. Uh, job job creation is huge. Uh, gas prices have come down like over eighty straight days, so. And then, and then, with this Dobbs decision, I think that's uh, again. I think that is going to make a big difference, and I think Republicans know this. Uh, so again, I'm guardedly optimistic that we can, you know, if we could. Here's the thing, and I don't know how many Americans realize this, but if if Democrats could retake the House, and then take the Senate, and with with, with Two more members, because because cinema and mansion are useless. But if we could get if we could get enough um, members of the Senate, then they could codify Roe right there. We don't need the Supreme Court. They could they could uh, pass a law uh, uh, giving back women's rights to their reproductive rights back. That would be amazing, and that would be such a huge a huge thing. And we can we can easily do that if Americans wake up. And go to the polls. We that can be accomplished easily. How can uh, I'm I'm, in, I'm probably inviting a shitstorm for you, but uh, how can people <laughs> how can people get in touch with you? Um, they can go to M Lukovic M L U C K at AJC dot com. Okay, okay. You'll probably be getting. Uh, I, I I hope not uh, hate mail, but. Uh, uh, you mean, know, I'm I'm used to it, and if I get it, uh, there there probably won't be any response. But have you? I mean, are we at a point? You, I mean, you've never have you ever been threatened? I mean, like physically threatened? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh huh. Um, How yeah. do you handle that? Um, you know, I report it to my paper, and uh, so I I once was threatened, and and you know we had security in our backyard, and and security patrolling our neighborhood. And then, but you know, with a, with a cartoon, 
you know, people get very upset, but then it kind of, you know, it'll kind of die down. And so that's, that's sort of the, the, the routine. And it doesn't happen often. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine when that happens, your wife is going, remember when I said, you know, political cartooning would be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, well, you know what? She doesn't even read Facebook because, uh, you know, she will read it and she will go to, to my site or whatever, whatever, whatever that's called. And she'll read the, uh, responses from people and, and they, that bothers her too much. So she just doesn't even go on. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're, you're a very, you're a br very brave and smart person and quite skillful. And I, I wish you I the tell best. my wife that every day. I tell <laughs> her those three things every day. We could go on and on. Is there anything I haven't asked that you'd like to go to? Um, well, I would say in, in this book, uh, you know, I've done some writing, little short, uh, pieces in it. Uh, and so it's not just, uh, uh, uh cartoons. Uh, it also has some uh, cartoons where I tell stories uh, about the impact of the cartoon, and they're not all negative. I, I uh, uh, there's a cartoon in there that I did about John Lewis that that uh, got a lot of uh, attention, and 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 one about the Carters, uh, and after he he had uh, after a brain to after they discovered he had a brain tumor. And the after effect, uh, after uh, effects of that, and and I did a cartoon about that, and and what happened after that was was really kind of cool. So so that's in the book. So it's it's a uh, uh, you know I think it, it's a book that if you like humor and you like politics, I think people will, will enjoy it. Excellent. Um, we've been talking with uh, Mike Lukovich, the uh, political cartoonist, Pulitzer Prize winning. Uh, car political cartoonist for the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Um, I'm John Dedakis. That's how you can contact me, johndedakis.com. And uh, uh, Mike, this has been a treat. I really appreciate the chance, the opportunity to to talk with you. We've never met before, uh, no. but I've certainly admired your work from afar. And it's wonderful to be able to get a much better sense of how you go about doing what you do. So thank you. Thank you, John. You you were a great interviewer. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Take care. You too, John.